Grace and peace be yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this morning is taken for, from the gospel lesson for this Sunday from Matthew 25. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know not the day nor the hour. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us wisdom to be concerned about being prepared for your coming, so we may be found ready in the faith and in our faith active in our service to you. In Jesus' name, amen. John Brandick got the bad news. He was at the doctors consulting him about some tests that the doctor wanted to take. And the bad news was this, you have pancreatic cancer. After the initial shock of that news, the doctor informed him that it would be best if he went home and got his affairs in order. John asked, oh, how much time do you think I have? The doctor said, maybe a year. John went home and assessed his situation. Sure, he could have just stayed home and thought about what was happening and what was coming and prepare himself that way. But John was not that kind of a person. John decided that he was going to go out in style. And so this is what he did. He sold his house, he quit his job, he withdrew all the money he had from various investments and insurances and savings, everything that he had. And he decided that he was going to do the things that he had looked forward to doing at an older age. And so he began to dine at all the really nice restaurants in town. And then he decided that he was going to go on a cruise. And his uh, travel agent figured out a way how he could board a cruise, say in Florida, go off to Europe, and when the cruise came back, he could disembark, and that very same day go on another cruise and go off sailing and do that. He wouldn't even have to rent an apartment or stay at a hotel. He would just enjoy the cruises until the end came. After a year, John felt pretty good. He thought, you know, if I'm going to die very shortly, I, I, I feel pretty good. And he kept on enjoying himself. After two years, John began to ask some questions to himself. And when he got back to the country, he went to the hospital and asked the doctor, how come after two years I'm still feeling great? And you said, I only had one year to live. They ran some more tests, and John got the bad news. You don't have pancreatic cancer. You just had some inflammation of the pancreas. You're fine. I say that's bad news because although now he could live, outside of a black suit, a white shirt, and a red bow tie in which he was going to be buried in, he had nothing. Last we hear, he's trying to get some money out of the hospital for their wrong diagnosis. It reminds us of what Jesus said at the very end of the parable this morning. Watch, therefore, you know neither the day nor the hour. You must be prepared and prepare wisely. 
It's Tuesday of what we call Holy Week. Jesus has only a few days left to live before he would be crucified. He tells this parable to a group of people, urging them to understand that there will come an end. It might be in your lifetime, or it might be much later. But in the end, you will see the end. And it is indeed good, right, and healthy for you to be ready for that, to be prepared, to know what is needed. In order to get that message across, Jesus tells a parable about a wedding. Now, it's a lot different then than it is today, but just to give you a brief overview, the wedding always took place in the bride's home. And after the wedding was done, usually late afternoon, then a procession, two processions in fact, would take place to go to the groom's home to celebrate with a wedding feast. The first procession was the bride herself and her bridesmaids, in this case, 10 virgins. And as they go to the, bro uh, the groom's home, she enters and goes in, and the bridesmaids wait outside. They wait for the bridegroom to come, his procession, and then escort him in. But like so often happens at weddings, things don't exactly come off perfectly. And there's a delay. The bridegroom isn't coming. And the virgins are there with their lamps because now it's getting dark and they need their lamps on, and then they doze off. When the shout goes up, the bridegroom is coming, they quickly wake up and begin to prepare, but only five of them brought extra oil. The other five did not, and their lamps are going out. They can't have that. And so they beg for some oil. But the five wise virgins refuse to share their oil because their chief responsibility is to welcome the bridegroom. Their chief responsibility is to escort him into the celebration. Their responsibility is not to look out for others. The foolish virgins have to find a dealer. It's the middle of the night. And who's going to open up their store for them? But when they finally come back and knock on the door, let us in, they hear the voice, I do not know you. And wisely, who's going to open their door in the middle of the night? Jesus says, this tells us to be prepared. You don't know the day or the hour when the end comes. This is good advice for us as well. And we also deal with a similar problem. The virgins knew what was expected of them. They had this job to do, to escort the bridegroom into the feast. That was their job. And five of them were prepared for a delay. They had the extra oil. We too know when Jesus is coming. Oh, not the hour or the day, but we know that he is coming. Either he will come, as described in the epistle lesson, suddenly, throughout the world, the end is there. And those who are in Christ will be judged for eternal life. Those who are, in, are not in Christ, the judgment will fall heavily upon them. To eternal death. So it really counts to be prepared. It really is important that we know exactly how to be ready for his coming. There's nothing more important than that. But the problem is, is that people don't follow the advice. There are people who are not particularly concerned about being prepared for Jesus' coming, if they even believe it at all. Now, you would seem to think that common sense 
would come to every one of them to know and understand that their time is not forever here on earth. There is a time where the Lord will call them. Are they ready? Are they prepared? Do they know what to do? Many people don't care. They don't know what they are going to do. Instead, they choose another way, their way. But just in case, they're willing to be what I call proxy Christians. A proxy is somebody who stands in your place or uses you to help them. A proxy Christian is one who thinks himself as a Christian, but lets others really do the work. Now, I'm not going to really lay into that too much because guess what? They're not here. You're here. And many times it's in the family that you see this proxy, proxy Christianity. It might be a wife, it might be a husband, a son or a daughter. They'll let mom or dad or wife or sister or brother be the Christian in the family. They're the ones that go to church. They're the ones that believe. They're the ones that are prepared. But they, well, they're satisfied with those people going to church. And if it really comes to it, I can always put it together at the last minute. I can always find a church someplace that will take me. I can always turn and find Jesus at the last minute. Except if you're not prepared at the last minute, then it slips right through your fingers. And being a proxy Christian, you sadly enable them to live in their fantasy. You need to say to them, wake up. Wake up and take seriously the need to prepare to be ready to receive Christ. In our gospel lesson this morning, we hear the law. Those who are not prepared, who don't seem to take things very seriously, they don't have the right understanding of their responsibilities. To them, the law is very clear. If you fail at this, you will be very sorry for it. You will not be part of the wedding feast. But the gospel is also there. It tells us that not only does God tell us what's going to happen so we can be prepared? But even better than that, God works in our life to make us prepared. He gives us the very things that we need to be prepared. For example, in our baptism, the word called us to be a son or daughter in the kingdom of God. As a son and daughter, to have faith in Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit's work through the Word. And so he enables us to believe, to know Christ as Lord and Savior, and to trust in him. But not only baptism, through the Lord's Supper, weekly we can come and receive the forgiveness of our sins. We receive the forgiveness of sins that would try to mislead us in a different direction. Rather, we have Jesus' forgiveness, so we become closer to him. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. One for us by the blood of Christ on the cross. And we daily can seek out the word to have that word strengthen our faith. In the German city of Magdeburg is a great Gothic cathedral. Work began in 1209, over 800 years ago. And it continued for a couple of hundred years. About 40 years after the beginning of the cathedral, a stone carver was employed to carve a magnificent entrance to the church. The theme he chose was from our gospel lesson, the 10 virgins. As you stand in front of this cathedral, you look to the left and you see the wise virgins descending down 
a column. You know that they're wise, not because there's a placard that says that, but you can see this beautiful, serene smiles on their face. It's amazing how a stone carver can take such a rigid piece of material and make it almost flow. Their hair in a breeze. And then on the right side, you can tell these are the foolish virgins because the expression on their face is one of horror. They are aghast at what they have done, how they have failed, and what they're going to miss out. For 800 years, the people of Magdeburg had come and gone through that cathedral. Some have learned their lesson from the, that piece of art. They are reminded once again how to be prepared. Others have ignored it to their eternal shame. May you and I be wise in our preparing, looking to Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.